Today's video is about the children who tragically lost their lives and those heroic teachers who tried to save them. This video will not go into detail about the shooting, nor name the shooter. The 14th of December 2012, a tragic shooting occurred at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newton, Connecticut that claimed the lives of 26 people. While the nation mourned, the stories of heroism and bravery that emerged from the tragedy were truly remarkable. Among the many heroes that day were the teachers of Sandy Hook, who put themselves in harm's way to protect their students. It was a typical Friday morning at Sandy Hook Elementary School when the shooting began. The teachers were in the middle of their lessons and children were playing in the hallways. When the gunfire erupted, the teachers' first instincts were to protect their students. The teachers of Sandy Hook were dedicated professionals who were deeply committed to the well-being and education of their students. On the day of the shooting, they showed incredible courage and bravery in the face of extreme danger. Here are their stories. Victoria Soto was a 27-year-old first grade teacher. When the shooter entered her classroom, she quickly hid her students in a closet and told them to be quiet. When the shooter demanded to know where the children were, Soto told him that they were in the gym. By doing this, she put herself between the shooter and the children, and sadly, she was killed trying to protect her students. But her actions saved the lives of several of her students who were hiding in the closet. Lauren Russo was a sub-teacher who had been working at Sandy Hook for just a few weeks when the shooting occurred. Despite her limited experience, she acted quickly and heroically to protect her students. Russo barricaded her students in a classroom and tried to keep them calm by singing to them and telling them stories. Tragically, Russo was killed during the shooting, but her actions saved the lives of several of her students. Don Hoshbrung, the principal of Sandy Hook Elementary School, also showed immense courage and bravery during the shooting. When she heard the gunshots, she ran towards the shooter with school psychologist Mary Sherlock and tried to tackle him. They both lost their lives trying to confront the shooter and protect their students. Hoshbring was a beloved figure in the community and her dedication to her students and her school was unwavering. Anne-Marie Murphy, who was a special ed teacher, was found embracing one of her students, Dylan Hockley, who had autism. Murphy had used her body to shield Dylan as a way to protect him from harm, but sadly, they were both killed. Rachel Levino was a 29-year-old behavioral therapist who had been working at Sandy Hook for just a few weeks when the shooting occurred. During the shooting, she was in a meeting with several colleagues when they heard the gunshots. She immediately sprang into action, trying to protect her students and her last known action was to try and shield them from harm. Caitlin DeBellis, who was a first grade teacher, managed to hide her students in a tiny bathroom. She also kept them calm and quiet as the shooting unfolded. Caitlin's quick thinking and bravery saved the lives of her students. DeBellis later wrote a book called Choosing Hope about her experience and how it changed her life. These teachers, along with many others at Sandy Hook, exemplify the best qualities of educators, courage, selflessness, and a commitment to protecting and nurturing their students. Their actions will never be forgotten, and they will always be remembered as the heroes who put themselves in harm's way to save the lives of the innocent children in their care. The aftermath of the Sandy Hook school shooting was a time of immense grief and sadness for the community. The shooting, which resulted in the deaths of 20 children, 20 innocent children, and six educators was a senseless act of violence that shook the country to its core. Newtown and the surrounding communities came together to mourn the loss of the victims and to support their families. Vigils, memorials, and other events were held to honor the lives of the children and educators who had been killed. People from all over the world sent messages of love and support to the community. The teachers of Sandy Hook faced a long road to recovery. They lost colleagues and friends, and many of them were dealing with trauma and grief. 
Despite this, they showed remarkable resilience and strength. They returned to school to help their students cope with the tragedy and to create a sense of normalcy in their lives. The shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School was one of the deadliest school shootings in US history and it had a profound impact on the nation. In the aftermath of the shooting, there were calls for greater gun control measures and increased attention to mental health issues. Many of the families of the victims became advocates for gun safety and mental health awareness and they have worked tirelessly to promote changes in policy and legislation aimed at preventing similar tragedies in the future. The Sandy Hook school shooting was a tragedy that will never be forgotten and the impact it had on the community of Newtown and the nation will be felt for years to come. May the resilience, strength and compassion demonstrated by the community in the aftermath of the shooting serve as a reminder about the importance about coming together in times of tragedy. May everybody who lost their lives in this tragic event rest in peace. I will never understand why anybody would commit such evil. These kids that lost their lives were not just victims of a school shooting. They were children with futures, with families who loved them, and they will never be forgotten. Charlotte Bacon loved dresses and also loved school. Daniel Barden played the drums and had a fearless pursuit of happiness. Olivia Engel took art lessons and also dance lessons. She also played soccer, tennis and swam. Josephine Gay liked to ride the bike and sell lemonade during the summer. Dylan Hockley loved to play tag with the neighbors. Madeline Sue loved running and dancing. Catherine Hubbard loved animals, so her mom started an animal foundation in her name. Chase Kowalski had already at six years old completed his first triathlon. He also loved baseball. Jesse Lewis loved math, riding horses and playing at his mom's farm. Anna Marquez Green was described as a beautiful and vibrant little girl. James Mattioli loved playing games on his iPad and to swim like a fish in his grandfather's pool. Grace McDonald was described as the light of her family and when she grew up she wanted to be a painter. Emily Parker was bright, creative and very loving and also an exceptional artist. Jack Pinto loved sports. His favorite was football, but he also liked basketball and baseball. Noah Posner loved playing with his cousins and siblings, but especially with his twin sister. Caroline Previtti was six years old when she passed away. Her family started a foundation in her name to give kids scholarships to support their passions. Jessica Rakos loved everything about horses, including drawing them and writing stories about them. She also loved orcas and playing with her two little brothers. Aviel Richmond loved horses and was at her happiest when she was on one. Benjamin Wheeler loved soccer, swimming, but also the Beatles, Lighthouses and the number 7 train at Sunnyside, Queens. Alison Wyatt loved to draw and wanted to be an artist when she grew up. Thank you for watching. Keep these families in your prayers and remember to tell your loved ones that you love them. Stay safe.